Dr. David Batnaik is a mythologist, leadership coach, and the chief belief officer of the Future Group. Originally trained in medicine, he turned the passion he had for stories and culture into his vocation and an entirely unique job title. He is well known for his books and lectures on the relevance of myth and mythology in contemporary culture and society. We are thrilled to have him with us again, so please join me in welcoming him back to TEDxASB. So my topic is not quite avatar. So we are all familiar with this, isn't it? I show this poster and everybody says, that's an avatar. 1.1. But there is a version 1.0. From where we are told the avatar was inspired. There you can see the blue color. There you can see the tail. And I wonder which is the real avatar, because if I ask people around the world, this is what will be identified as avatar, not this one. I've been asking myself, what exactly does this word mean? In the internet, it means it's a secret identity. You can have as many avatars as you want, like Superman. You can be Bruce Wayne, you can be Clark Kent. Is that what avatar is all about, having a secret identity? Or is Avatar a hero? Someone and achieves the impossible like Conan the Barbarian. Or is Avatar the savior like Neo who will take you out of Matrix and lead you to Zion? When I saw the film, it spoke of war like Lord of the Rings. There was the corporation on the one side and the hunter-gatherers of Pandora on the other. As in Lord of the Rings, you have on one side the orcs and the other side the hobbits. And I realized that the prerequisite to being an avatar is war. And then I saw another film, a children's film called Harry Potter. It also spoke of war between the good guys and the bad guys, the followers of the Dark Lord who have to be vanquished and killed. And I realized that to be Avatar, not only must I have a secret identity, not only must I be a hero, not only must I want to save people, but I need a villain, someone who I have to kill and destroy. That's what Avatar is all about. Somehow it didn't quite sound like the stories I heard as a child. And the stories I read as I became a scholar of mythology. Something was missing. As I watched Harry Potter, I asked myself, why should the Dark Lord be killed? As I watched Lord of the Rings, I wondered, why should the Dark Lord again? be killed? Why is every story ending in war with a good guy and a bad guy? And the good guy has to win. Who decides who is good, who is bad? The author? The filmmaker? The storyteller? Why is suddenly corporations the bad guy and hunter-gatherers good guys? Why is it suddenly that sweet dwarves are the good guys and ugly, misshapen orcs the bad guys? What makes beauty good and ugliness bad? And that is when I revisited the stories of childhood and I learned something very interesting. I learned that the word evil, so used so casually in English, has no synonym in a single Indian language. When I presented this to my friends, they said, what rubbish? Evil exists. I said, then why is there no synonym? I read a holy book which said, everything that exists is divine. Your worst enemy is divine. He exists to reveal the divinity within you. This image shows divinity encompassing the whole world. And then I asked myself, am I missing something? 
And so I read the stories of the avatars. This was the first avatar that I read about. The fish avatar. And this is the story. One day, a small fish comes to man and says, Save me from the big fish. And the man takes the small fish, puts him in a pot, a small pot, protects him, creates a sanctuary, a shelter from the big fish. The next day, the small fish becomes bigger, so he needs a larger pot. On the third day, it becomes bigger. He needs a still larger pot. The fish keeps growing, so the pots become bigger. A point comes when there is no pot enough to accommodate the growing fish. So it's put in a pond, then in a lake, then in a river, finally the sea. It keeps growing. So man says, let there be rain to accommodate the growing fish. And the sea starts to expand, and before you know it, the earth is being dissolved, submerged. And man says, someone should save me now. And the fish says, don't worry, I will save you. And at no point does man ask, why was the flood there? Why did the flood happen? Why was the earth getting submerged? At no point did the man ask, a point comes when the fish is big enough to take care of itself. It does not need a pot. In its generosity and kindness lay the seed of destruction. In this story I learned that the hero was actually the villain. And then I heard another story. The story of a demon who cannot be killed by a human or an animal, inside the house or outside the house, at day or at night. And so the avatar comes as a strange creature, which is half human, half lion, catches hold of him, takes him to the threshold, which is neither inside nor outside, and kills him at twilight, which is neither day nor night. Good guy, bad guy, simple. Look at the violence in the picture. But then I was told, wait a minute, wait a minute. The villain was actually, in his previous life, the doorkeeper of God. And due to some mysterious circumstances, an error, an honest error, he was cursed to be this horrifying demon. So this act of violence is actually an act of liberation. This is not an act of hatred, but an act of love liberating him from the cursed life. And then I heard a third story of an avatar. I heard the story of Ram killing the demon Ravan, who had abducted his wife, an evil man. And then I was told, wait a minute, wait a minute. He may be a villain, but he's also a great devotee of God. He was a wise man, an educated man, skilled in the arts, in music, in literature. In this picture, you see him holding a lute which he designed himself, singing a song which is still sung today. And I said, oh, so the villain is a devotee of God. And then I heard another avatar, Krishna. And I was told in this story that one day there was a great war, Good guys and bad guys. And the bad guys were defeated. And the good guys rose to heaven. And when they rose to heaven, they found the villains in heaven. And the heroes were very upset. They said, what are the bad guys doing in heaven? And God says, haven't you forgiven them yet? You have killed them, taken over their kingdom, they are dead. And still you cling on to your anger. Move on. Let go. This is not what I heard in the film Avatar. And I wonder why. Everywhere I heard that the Avatar is inspired by Indian stories. Cosmetically, yes. Cosmetically, it's, there was the blue color, there was the tail. But what was the emotion? The emotion was very different. And this is my hypothesis. It's called a 3B model. You see, business depends on how we behave. And behavior depends on what we believe in. 
In cultural term it means any culture that we see depends on the stories that exist in that culture. And that story comes from an idea. If I believe that life is a journey with a clearly defined destination, one destination, a single destination, then I need a hero, a savior who will take me there. I need Avatar 1.1. And I find these in cultures where the currency has only one language, as in a US dollar bill, or maybe two, as in a euro bill. But there are other ideas in this world. There are ideas which say, life is not a journey with a defined destination. No matter how hard you try, perfection will not be achieved. Life will be a series of moments. There will be good guys, bad guys, bad guys becoming good guys, good guys becoming bad guys. Try as you hard, perfection won't be achieved. Every child will come with its own problems. You are educators here. No matter how hard you try, in every batch there will be a student who will work hard and there will be a student who will be lazy. It never ends. There will never be a batch where every student comes to class on time and leaves on time willingly. This is life. And so avatar is a descent into the context you live in. And what is the context? This is where avatar 1.0 comes in. He says, yes, you may have to fight villains, you may have to kill dead guys, but hold on, that bad guy may be you. It may be the alpha inside you which wants to dominate and be a pack leader. It is your desire. Are you sure you are the hero? Are you sure you are the good guy? It's quite possible. You are the Dark Lord. So be patient. Study, observe. Don't be quick to judge that the hero is me. We all want to be Harry Potter. And here you see a culture with 17 languages on the currency note. Is it by accident? When I speak of India all over the world, I hear only three words, chaos, corruption and caste. I hear nothing else. I don't hear the stories of the avatar. In fact, Indians don't know the story of the avatar. Pick up a comic book right now, see a television serial of the avatar right now, and they'll all say, good guy, bad guy, good guy kills the bad guy. It's so simple. This is what is happening all over the world. We want a simple story where we are the good guys and the other is the bad guy. We all want a clearly defined destination. This is the story we are telling. And I hear this everywhere. In history, textbooks are written with heroes and villains. He is good, he is bad. He is right, he is wrong. I read economics, and again there is conflict. Haves and have-nots. Haves are bad, have-nots are good. I read political books and again I hear the good guys and the bad guys, the left wing and the right wing and we are not sure who are the good guys. Every narrative is presented as a conflict. We want to kill, burn, destroy somebody or the other. It is almost as if I have a right to this planet. Nobody does. And yet, I am right and you are wrong. And as we are talking about transforming cultures, ask yourself, are we trampling some other cultures in moral outrage? Is it quite possible that we are the dark lords? Is it possible or we are always right and the other is always wrong? Read the newspapers, Watch the reality shows. Everywhere it is Avatar 1.1. If I do a statistical analysis today around the world and ask people what does Avatar mean, they will say it's James Cameron film. They will say it's a secret identity. It's a hero. It's a savior. Statistically speaking, very few would know the lost stories of the Avatar. Even Indians. 
we would like to have a word for evil. It makes so, life so simple. Cut out the inefficient. Cut out the wrong. If life was so simple, then we wouldn't have so many wars where each side feels they are Harry Potter. And I think that is what we are missing. So the next time you see someone whom you hate and you despise, ask yourself, do you want a global currency which will one day have English and Arabic and Chinese and Hindi and Swahili? If so, what, do you, what story do you want to tell your children? Do you tell your children, kill them because he is wrong? Or you say, try and understand the person whom you hate the most. It will not be easy. But to rise in grace, we have to outgrow gravity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dave, for that incredibly thought-provoking speech.